Uh, in terms of other income, you will see that there is a significant drop. That is mainly because of foreign exchange income. Last year, if you remember, there was a significant depreciation of the rupee and as a result, there was a significant foreign exchange gain, which we did not see this year. Initial part of the year, the rupee was uh, rupee actually appreciated, but now it's more or less flat from where it was as of December 2018. Impairment has gone up significantly. Uh, now, before that, the total operating income has gone up by 7%, so mainly driven by the growth in NII. Uh, impairment has gone up significantly as a result of asset quality deteriorating, especially in the first quarter. So you see a, a total impairment at a group level of 9.1 billion. Uh, net operating income overall has remained flat after impairment. Operating expenses at a group level has gone up by 16%. Again, this is, I think I mentioned even at the last presentation, uh, at a group level, this was mainly coming from HNB Assurance because they uh, revalued their shareholder uh, uh, life, uh, life fund in the first quarter of last year. Normally, you, uh, re you value the life fund only in the last quarter, but because of a tax implication, they did it in the first quarter. So therefore, the uh, cost there in 2018 was artificially low, but you will see that the group expenses, more or less the increase converging with the bank numbers as we uh, uh, see the full year numbers. So taxes have gone up, the effective tax rates have gone up significantly with the introduction of uh, debt repayment levy. Overall, uh, PAT was down by 35% and profits attributable to shareholders dropped by 34%. So the bank numbers more or less reflect the group numbers. Uh, uh, you would see NII growing by 11%, fee income slight drop, uh, the same impact on other income. Expenses, like I mentioned, has grown only by 12% at a bank level, while at a group level, because of the impact of uh, HNB assurance, you see that it is at 16% at the group level. So overall, at a bank level, PAT, was, uh, PAT declined by 33% to 8 billion. So again, this chart shows you how the PAT has moved from 2018 September to 2019 September. The plus has mainly come from NII as well as fee income, while the biggest uh, negative has come from uh, expenses as well as from impairment. So on ROE for the group, it was, uh, we recorded 8.2%. NII uh, went, uh, NII on average assets went up slightly to 4.94 with the improvement in margins. Other income to average assets have dropped. Impairments have gone up and operating cost has also slightly gone up. So the, the drop in ROA from 1.7% to 1% mainly is a reflection of impairment to average assets or cost of credit going up, as well as uh, you see uh, the cost has also slightly gone up as a percentage of average assets. So we got, uh, there were contributions coming from all the group companies, HMB Assurance of course will have their major contribution coming in the last quarter when they value the life, uh, life fund. Uh, HMB Finance has contributed positively, but their performance was also affected by the increase in NPS and deterioration in the asset quality that even the banking sector has been witnessing. The investment bank has also contributed positively, and you see that there is a contribution coming from the property company as well. So uh, if you look at NIMS, overall, uh, if I take a look at 
the graph to my right hand side you see that overall NIMS have remained more or less flat from where it was in 2018 so if you remember as of June 2019 we saw improvement in NIMS but as of September NIMS have come down and if you look at the chart on the left hand side you will see that on a quarter on quarter basis NIMS have been coming down and this is mainly as a result of interest rates coming down and that having an impact on NIMS. So non-funded income or fee income main contributions are from trade remittances cards but of course the growth has not been that great in most of these areas in 2019. So in terms of cost to income ratio has slightly gone up as a result of income not growing as fast as we would like it to as well as expenses going up slightly. If you look at uh, uh, the overall increase in expenses there has been significant investments that are, has been going into IT and digital as well as there is an increase coming from the collective uh, agreement that we do once in three years which we did last year and there is an impact on that in terms of increasing staff cost as well. So uh, asset quality was the main focus this year and uh, if we if you see in the first quarter we saw a, a, a significant spike in NPAs uh, rising but since then the second quarter and the third quarter I think with the focus that we have put in recovery in managing NPAs we have been successful in bringing down or containing the NPA ratio despite industry and some of the peer banks witnessing their NPAs continuously going up so that's something that we have been focusing and that's something we will continue to focus and try to see whether we can even bring the ratio down by the last quarter which will of course if we are successful help us to contain the credit cost as well so main contributions into NPA has come from the construction sector manufacturing uh, and agriculture so uh, we are fairly well capitalized our tier 1 ratio is at 13.8 percent with a requirement of 10 percent and with the recent debenture issue our total capital adequacy ratio has also gone up beyond 17 percent uh, whereas the requirement is 14 percent <coughs> so on the uh, tax side I think I mentioned the effective tax rate which was at 47% last year has gone up to 58% this year with the introduction of the debt repayment levy which is a significant impact on the overall returns. But uh, the debt repayment levy was brought in saying that it will be effective only up to December 2021. Uh, we are, of course we would be lobbying to see whether we can even take it out before that but uh, as it stands now it's effective up to uh, December 2021 so this is on the balance sheet uh, we uh, not seen a significant growth this year actually the loan book has to an extent contracted uh, because again we have been focusing on asset quality and we have not been aggressive in terms of uh, driving loans this year with the um, environment not being too conducive for that Deposits have seen a slight increase and we have also uh, uh, continue to have a CASA ratio of around 35%. So these are some of the shareholder returns. Uh, we've seen the stock share market going up in the recent past and we have seen our share also moving up. So with that let me pause there and uh, take if there are any questions.